Hello class, so today we will be discussing about gunpowder and other explosives. So the objective of it, the examination of gunpowder or gunshot residue or gunpowder residue and other explosives are the following. To determine whether a person has fired a gun with bare hands within a pertinent period of time. Bakit? ko binanggit yung bare hands saka yung pertinent period of time so malalaman natin yan as we go along the discussion so dun sa regarding sa pertinent period of time ang isa sa SOP namin sa crime lab is um, not to accept requests for paraffin examination and gunpowder examination which has lapsed already for 72 hours after the incident has happened Okay, so very important kasi yung uh, period of time also. So next is to determine the probable gunshot range. Like for example, the distance the firearm was held from the body of the victim at the time of the discharge. Okay. So there are two kinds of gunpowder. We have the black powder. It consists of an intimate mixture of charcoal, sulfur, and potassium or sodium nitrate in proportions of 15, 10, and 75 percent respectively. So when this powder explodes in open space, the following reaction takes place. Uh, we have two moles of potassium nitrate plus carbon and then sulfur. You will create that will yield um, carbon dioxide, potassium sulfide, and nitrogen gas. Okay, for smoke less naman, it consists of cellulose nitrate or glycerol nitrate combined with cellulose nitrate and some stabilizers. Um, when this powder explodes in open space, the following chemical reaction takes place. So the cellulose nitrate and uh, will be um, decomposed into carbon monoxide, nitrogen gas, water, and carbon dioxide. And then the glycerol nitrate will be decomposed to carbon dioxide, water, nitrogen gas, and oxygen gas. Okay. When either the black or smokeless powder is exploded, certain products of combustion are formed with, which include partially burned particles. These burnt residues and partially burned particles are deposited in the target at a definite pattern depending upon the distance between the target and the muzzle of the gun. The size and density of the pattern are principal factors in, the, in ascertaining the distance between the muzzle of the gun and the victim at the time of discharge. Besides being deposited on the target and in the barrel of the gun, some of these burned residues and partially burned residues or particles may escape around the breech of the gun and implants on the exposed uh, surface of the hand of the person firing the gun. The presence of these particles serves as the basis for diphenyl paraffin test or the paraffin test itself. So yung sinasabi dito na residues and partially burned particles na nag escape sa breech ng gun, yun yung usually na re-recover or natetest natin during paraffin examination na ginagamitan natin ng diphenylamine I'm sorry diphenylamine reagent to determine the presence of gunpowder residue in the hands of a subject who was um, um, suspected to fire a gun gunpowder residues are embedded in the pores of the skin because of the force of explosion so that's why Ang ginagamit is paraffin wax, molten paraffin wax, which is um, minimelt siya and then palalamigin ng konti. And while it is hot, sa kanila lagay dun sa kamay ng subject. Okay. So we have primer residues. These are resulting from the explosion of the primer when heat by the firing pin of the firearm. It is deposited superficially on the region of the thumb and the index finger. 
So, um, usually yung focus natin sa paraffin examination is yung dito sa part na to, dito sa may thumb and dito sa gitna niya ng thumb and ng index finger kasi yung um, mechanism ng paghawak natin ng barel. Ito usually yung exposed portions. Kaya sila yung focus natin during a paraffin examination. This can be collected by swabbing with cotton. Yung sa swabbing with cotton na nakokollect yan, usually ginagamit to sa pag-examine ng firearms. Kung meron ba siyang presence ng gunpowder residue. Kasi it is believed na after firing a gun, nagkakaroon ng deposit sa firearm and kinokollect yan ng true swabbing or cotton swabbing. Pero ang kalaban natin dyan is kung marunong yung suspect na nilinis niya agad yung... Um, firearm niya. So, very minimal na lang yung chances natin na makakollect ng gunpowder residue or primer residues. So, in ascertaining the gunshot range, we conduct microscopic examination for possible gunpowder residues. So, titignan natin yung tinatawag na singeing or yung pagkasunog ng um, sides ng wound, gunshot wound and then merong burning smudging and powder tattooing. So, ito yung mga factors na i-consider natin para ma-assertin natin yung range ng gunshot. So, the distance from which a firearm was discharged may be classified into three zones. Letter A is those in which the muscle of the gun was held directly in contact with the body or practically practically so. So, ang characteristic niyan, merong gaping hole where the fabric or the skin is badly torn, may blackened area surrounding the bullet hole, singeing of the fiber or yung pagkasunog at the entrance, presence of partially burnt powder residues around the entrance hole, at saka pag contact gunshot wound, meron tayong tinatawag na stellate stellate wound stellate gunshot wound kasi sa sobrang lakas sa pressure na at saka sobrang lapit nung um, firearm dun sa victim nag uh, nag nagperform yung wound niya na parang star kaya tinawag na stellate gunshot wound so eto yung example like this, ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyong stellate gunshot wounds. Ibig sabihin, direct contact yung firearm dun sa skin nung victim natin. So, kung mapapansin nyo, merong mga black dun sa gilid nung wound, yun yung sinasabi natin na gunpowder residue na na-deposit dun sa mismong wound. Dito rin, merong blackening of the wound. Ito namang picture na to is an example of, this is an example of an entry wound, pero hindi na siya ganun ka-contact or kalapit. And then, this is an example of an exit wound. Kung mapapansin nyo, medyo elongated yung entrance or entry wound. And then, pabilog na yung exit wound. Kasi dito, medyo nasir nasira pa yung laman dahil sa lapit siguro ng firearm dun sa katawan ng victim. And then, sa paglabas ng bala, um, kung sakali man na merong exit wound, pabilog na siya. Okay. So, those, uh, another uh, characteristic is those in which the muscle of the gun was about 12 inches to 36 inches away. So, meron tayong makikita smudging. This is produced when the gun is held about 2 to 8 inches. It is dirty and grimy in appearance. So, yun yung smudging. So, medyo parang madumi siya. Merong tattooing, yung gunpowder. For example, merong dots, dots, dots na ganun sa gilid ng sugat or sa paligid ng gunshot wound. Yan yung tinatawag na tattooing. A black coarsely peppered pattern which are partially burned and unburned powder, powder nitrates. It is produced when the gun is held at a slightly greater distance from a target but with the range of the powder blast which was estimated to be about 36 inches. Okay?
And then the last um, characteristic is those in which the muscle of the gun was held beyond 36 inches. Kapag mas malayo na sa 36 inches, the evidence of powder tattooing is seldom present. So, malamang hindi na tayo makakakita ng tattooing. Ang gunshot range uh, determination would not be possible. So, medyo mahirap na siyang i-determine kung bayan 36 inches na siya. Okay? So, we have factors that affect the presence and amount of gunpowder residues, especially in during paraffin examination. So, marami kasing nagtatanong, for example, in my experience, may mga nangyayari ng instances na pinagpipilitan ng um, nakapag-fire siya ng gun and then it, the result will be in the paraffin examination the result will be negative for gunpowder residues or gunshot or gun uh, powder nitrates so ano-ano ba yung factors na yan natatanong kasi ako sa court kung bakit ganun yung nagiging result or minsan naman sinasabi na hindi siya nag-fire ng gun pero nagpa-positive siya sa gunpowder nitrates during paraffin examination. So, these are the factors. We have the type and caliber of the ammunition. Um, different types of ammunition fired in the same weapon and from the same distance may, gi may give different patterns. Okay, so it depends dun sa mechanism ng bullet and sa mechanism din na firearm. So, length of the length of the barrel of the gun a weapon with a 2 inches barrel will deposit residues over a larger area than a weapon having a 5 inches barrel even though they are fired at the same distance and with the same ammunition ang ano kasi nito yung explanation or principle kapag mas mahaba yung for example sa 5 inches mas mahaba yung travel ng bullet natin palabas ng firearm so yung depositing ng gunpowder residues um, pag paglabas ng, far, uh, ng bullet sa firearm kapag ka 5 inches yung barrel medyo nalalese na siya so nalalese na rin yung pro, uh, possibility na makara pag deposit sa kamay ng fire ng gun powder residues. While sa 2 inches, since konti lang yung travel ng bullet dun sa firearm, mas malaki yung possibility na mas marami siyang deposit sa kamay ng fire natin. Okay? Next is the distance of the muscle of the gun from the target. So, katulad nga kanina, pag mas malapit yung uh, firearm dun sa target, mas marami yung gunpowder residue na pwede nating makuha. So, pwede pa tayong mag-swab sa um, body of the victim. Pwede tayong mag-swab sa clothing niya kapag malapit yung uh, gun from the target. Pero pag malayo na, since ma for example, ito yung firearm. Kapag ka ito yung victim natin, for example, dito muna tayo sa malapit. Ito yung victim Pagka malapit lang siya, uh, kung tumatalsik yung mga gunpowder residue, may probability na matalsikan din yung victim natin. Pero kung malayo na siya, yung victim natin, um, syempre yung gravity, mas bumababa na yung ano, hindi na masyadong nakakarating dun sa victim natin. Okay? Next is yung humidity. This affects the speed with which powder burns would travel. Powder having lesser amount of moisture will burn more rapidly and completely within a given time, yielding a greater amount of residue. So, kapag humid yung panahon, hmm, medyo may moisture sa kapaligiran natin. So, kapag merong humidity at moisture, mas madaling maburn. Uh, kapag lesser ang humidity, mas madaling mapaburn yung gunpowder residue natin. So, ibig sabihin, mas marami tayong amount of residue na makukuha. Samantalang pag medyo mainit yung panahon, um, I mean, pag mainit pala, mas madaling mapaburn. Pero pagka... Uh, malamig ang panahon, mas mahirap mag-burn. Katulad lang rin sa, for example, magsisiga tayo or magpapaningas tayo ng mga kahoy. Mas mahirap pag ningasin yung kahoy pagka medyo humid yung surroundings natin. 
Pero pag mainit na mainit, walang moisture, mas madali siyang magbaburn dahil walang water dun sa kapaligiran niya. Okay? And then we have wind velocity and direction. In high winds, the residue will be blown in the direction of the wind, yielding a scattered pattern. So, depende yung, syempre kung saan papunta yung wind, dun din pupunta yung mga residue natin. For example, um, ito yung direction of firing. For example, um, ito yung firer natin. Tapos, finar niya yung gun, pero in this direction, ito yung subject natin. Pero yung wind, papunta dito sa direction na to. So, ang probability, yung um, mga gunpowder residues, hahanginin, papunta sa area na to. Hindi papunta dun sa victim natin. While kung ang wind, papunta rin dito sa direction na to, Okay, for example, ito. Yan yung direction of firing. And then, yung wind velocity natin papunta rin dito. So, ibig sabihin, mas marami tayong mag-yield na gunpowder residue sa subject natin or sa victim pag papunta dito yung wind natin. Pero, pag opposite ang wind uh, direction, so, pwede mapunta sa fire mismo yung ibang gunpowder residue natin. So, kapag papunta dito yung wind, mas malaki yung possibility sa subject makakuha tayo ng gunpowder residue. Pero pag other way around, mas malaki yung possibility na makakuha tayo ng residue dun sa fire natin. Kasi papunta sa kanya yung wind um, direction. Okay. Firing vertically slight, slightly greater, greater than firing horizontally from the same distance. So, ang vertical is Now, for example, pataas. Um, so, kung pataas, mas malaki yung probability na since uh, because of uh, gravi the force of gravity, pababa yung mga gunpowder residue dun sa kamay ng fire or sa katawan ng fire. Pero kung pababa yung um, pag-fire niya, papunta lang sa with the force of gravity, papunta lang rin sa ground yung karamihan ng gunpowder residue. So, hindi naman yan aakit sa pataas. So, kung meron man, mapunta sa kanya, konting-konti lang yung possibility. So, ito yung fired downward or vertically, all of the residues will fall on the target. But when fired horizontally, some of the residues will are likely fall, fall short of the target. So, kapag horizontal, ito yung vertical. Pag horizontal naman, hindi natin masabi kung gano'ng karami residue yung mapupunta sa target natin. Depende ngayon sa iba pang factors like wind velocity, direction, and humidity. Okay? These are the possibilities that a person may be found um, positive for nitrates even if even if he did not actually fire a gun. So, why? Bakit siya nagpa-positive sa gunpowder uh, nitrates kung hindi naman talaga siya yung nagpapotok ng gun? It is possible that the gunpowder particles may have been blown on the hand directly from the barrel of the gun being fired by another person. So, for example, um, ikaw na sa vicinity ka ng a person firing a gun and then yung wind velocity or wind direction papunta rin sa direction mo. So, there is a possibility na uh, yung particles na blown papunta rin sa, sa katawan mo or pati sa hand mo mismo. And then, an attempt to shield the body by raising the hand would in some instances result in implanting of powder particles on the hand of a person close to one firing a gun. So, so syempre, as defense mechanism, minsan itataas natin yung kamay natin. Um, there is a possibility na papunta rin sa yung depende rin dun sa mga factors na binanggit natin kanina, kung papunta sa yung wind, wind direction, there's a probability na ma-implant sa kamay ng tao, mismong kamay ng tao, yung na kahit di siya yung nagpaputok, um, yung ibang gunpowder residue, mapupunta rin sa kamay niya due to the wind velocity and direction also. Okay. Next. 
So, these are the possibilities naman that a person may be found negative for nitrates. So, this one, negative for nitrates even if he actually fired a gun. So, there is a use of automatic pistol, the direction of the wind, and wind velocity also. Meron siya excessive perspiration. Ibi ibig sabihin, laging open yung pores niya. So, kung open yung pores ng skin niya, kung nag-embed doon yung gunpowder residues, pwede rin makalabas agad. And then, meron yung use of glove. Siyempre, hindi mo kakapasok sa kamay kapag ka may glove siya. And, meron siyang knowledge of chemicals that will remove the nitrates. Okay? Next. So, um, punta naman tayo sa explosives. Pero, but before that, um, yung sa SOP namin, sinasabi ko kanina sa paraffin examination, 72 hours lang after the incident yung tinatanggap namin na request for paraffin examination dahil nga sa dami ng factors na pwedeng maka-affect and sa dami ng pwedeng mangyari for example, nagugas ng kamay paulit-ulit, marami siyang ginamit na kung ano-ano so, um, hindi na siya magiging effective yung um, result ng examination natin and then, ano pa yung ano, um Kapag meron kaming um, subject for paraffin examination, before i-subject sa paraffin testing, um, pinapahugas po na namin sila ng kamay kasi para ma-wash out yung ibang residue na hindi naman um, due to the gunpowder or firing a gun. Kasi ang paniniwala is yung mga residue ng gunpowder is naka-embed sa pores. So, pahugasin lang ng hindi mainit na tubig yung medyo malamig na tubig and or yung faucet tap water at hindi natin pagsasabunin. So, hindi rin natin hayaan na i-towel dry niya yung kamay niya, air dry lang. So, para sabi na hindi um, yung result is uh, due to other um, chemicals or other um, particles containing nitrates. Kasi yung tinetest natin dyan is nitrates, the presence of nitrates, which are, which appear to be, kapag gunpowder nitrates, they appear to be um, small blue specks on the paraffin wax or the paraffin test, blue specks with tailing. Um, so, for example, eto, for example, eto yung wax natin. Ito yung paraffin wax natin. So, kapag merong uh, presence ng gunpowder nitrates, ay, wala siya, sorry. Okay, that's an example. Pag may presence siya ng gunpowder nitrates, meron tayong mapapansin na blue speck. So, maliliit lang siya na dot ng blue. Like that. And then, kapag ka nag-flow yung chemical na ginagamit natin or the diphenylamine, magkakaroon siya ng tailing. Parang ganyan. Ganun. Yun tinatawag natin na blue specks with tailing. Hindi ganyan yung nagiging appearance ng ibang nitrates. For example, yung potassium nitrate, yung mga fertilizers, kasi may mga nitrates din yan. Hindi ganyan yung reaction sa paraffin examination or sa diphenylamine in a paraffin wax. So, malalaman natin, madidistinguish natin if that, those nitrates come from a gunpowder residue. Okay? And then, palaging sinasabihan sa paraffin examination yung subject, uh, nire-remind sila na wag agad magbabasa ng kamay as much as possible for 24 hours. Wag babasa yung kamay after paraffin examination or the casting of paraffin in their hands. Kasi sobrang init ng paraffin wax na nilagay sa kamay nila, yung sudden temperature change na yon tapos babasain nila, magkakaroon ng uh, reaction, harsh reaction ng skin natin. Pwede magkaroon ng blisters and then pwede magkaroon ng burns at mas malalapnos yung kamay. So, palaging pinapaalalahanan na huwag babasain yung kamay after ng paraffin examination for at least 24 hours. Um, what else? So, that's it for gunpowder residues. Now, we will proceed to explosives. The definition of some terms connect, connected with explosive and or explosive ingredients. 
So, an explosion is defined, actually na discuss ko na to dun sa first ever discussion natin ng forensic chemistry uh, with matching pictures. Um, this is only a review kung meron man tayong hindi nabigay na definitions dun. So, an explosion is defined as the act of exploding, exploding, which is a rapid combustion, the composition of gases, and consequent violent increase of pressure, usually ca causing a loud report. Okay, then detonation is a violent explosion, one resulting from the practically instantaneous decomposition or combustion of unstable compounds such as nitroglycerin, TNT or mercury fulminate as distinguished from explosion of black powder um, I don't know kung sino sa inyo medyo mahilig mag watch ng series sa Netflix pero meron kasi akong na come across na isang series sa Netflix na talaga na appreciate ko yung Breaking Bad kasi isa siyang chemistry professor yung bida dun na naging uh, dealer siya or hindi naman siya actually dealer. Siya yung naggagawa ng shabu dun sa ano pa, para kumita siya ng pera kasi nagkaroon siya ng cancer. So, maganda yung storyline nung series. And then, uh, meron doon part na may ginawa siyang white substance. Akala nung mga um, dealers or ng cartel na shabu yun or methamphetamine. Pero it turned out Uh, para hindi siya maloko, para maprotektahan niya yung sarili niya, it turned out na explosive pala yung white na yun. Ang sinabi niya dun sa ano, that that is a fulminated mercury. So, eto yun. Sa totoong buhay, that is mercury fulminate. So, that is an explosive. Okay, so ginamit niya yun para makatakas. So, medyo maganda rin yung ano ng storyline. Okay, kung medyo interested kayo, pwede nyo rin siyang panoorin para magkaroon din kayo ng idea actually doon sa mga glasswares, equipment sa isang laboratory. Kaya lang, methamphetamine laboratory lang yung makikita nyo. Okay, so that is against the law. Disclaimer. Next. Okay, next. Explosive is any substance that may cause an explosion by its sudden decomposition or combustion. So, Davis defines it as a material, either a pure single substance or a mixture of substances which is capable of producing an explosion by its own energy. So, it does have by its own energy. Ibig sabihin, as itself, it is an explosive and it can explode rapidly. And then, a bomb... This is poorly defined as a hollow projectile of iron, generally spherical, containing an explosive material which is fired by concussion or by a time fuse. Modern bombs are no longer constructed on such, on such pattern. So, marami na kasing iba't ibang paggawa ng bombs sa atin. Meron tayong mga... Um, paggamit ng bomb, depende na rin kasi nag, um, nagpa-prosper na rin or minsan nagkakaroon lang tayo ng mga improvisions. Okay? So, we have a classification of explosives according to their speed of detonation. We have low explosives or um, propellants. These decompose relatively slow at rates that vary up to 1,000 meters per second. Because of their slow burning rates, they produce propelling or throwing action that makes them suitable as propellants for ammunition or sky rockets. Um, its speed is known as the speed of deflagration or burning. I have um, actually differentiated deflagration from detonation dun sa first, um, dun so um, naging discussion natin in forensic chemistry. This is characterized by a very rapid oxidation producing heat, light, and a subsonic wave. This shock wave causes the chemical bonds of the explosive charge excuse me, to break apart, leading to the new instantaneous buildup of heat and gases. So, um, that causes an explosion. So, these are the examples. We have black powder, like safety fuse, black wrapper, 
powder is wrapped in a fabric or plastic casing. That is um, what serves as a time delaying fuse. Then we have smokeless powder. And then we have high explosives. They detonate almost instantaneously at rates from 1,000 to 8,500 meters per second, producing a smashing or shattering effect in the target. It is likewise called the speed of detonation. So yung kanina is speed of deflagration. Sa low explosives, we have deflagration. While in high explosives, we have... Saan ba ako? High explosive, we have... detonation sorry its sensitivity is as high as high explosive is further classified into the following we have initiating explosives or the primary explosive which are defined as ultra sensitive to heat shock or friction so tandaan natin ha meron sinasabi dito na ultra sensitive to heat shock or even friction and they can detonate violently instead of burning the primer provides the vital ingredients of the blasting cup and mercury fulminate. So it is seldom used in incendiary devices and homemade explosive in view of its extreme sensitivity to heat. So the examples of a high explosive or initiators are mercury fulminate, lead acide, and lead salts of picric acid. Okay. So, yung non-initiating explosives naman or the so-called secondary explosives, um, uh, they are referred to as the insensitive to heat, shock, or friction and would rather burn than detonate if ignited in small quantities in the open air. Mm. This group comprises the majority of high explosives used for commercial and, and mili military blasting. So, we have dynamites. TNT or trinitrotoluene, PETN, RDX, and tetril. So, ito rin yung mga in namin sa pag may dalang explosive or explosive ingredients sa laboratory. Ito yung mga tinitingnan namin if present dun sa samples or sa specimens natin. So, we have an SOP in receiving explosives and or explosive ingredients. Um, hindi natin siya tatanggapin as an explosive itself. For example, yung isang grenade. So, hindi natin siya tatanggapin as is for our safety. And part as part of our SOP, we let the, uh, pinapabalik muna namin yung sa EOD para yung EOD trained personnel ang mag magde-demilitarize ng grenade. So, ibig sabihin, i-open nila yung grenade, kukuhanin nila yung content sa loob at yung contents lang ang isesend sa laboratory for examination. Hindi yung mismong grenade. Ibig sabihin, demilitarized na siya. And yung safekeeping ng grenade mismo is dun sa EOD na unit na. And then, blasting caps also should be processed first by EOD trained personnel and the contents will be the one brought to the lab for examination. Kasi sabi kanina, diba, dun sa, sin sa diniscuss natin, na mayroong mga explosives na lalo na high explosives, um, pwede silang mag-detonate by itself um, kapag meron lang konting friction. E eh, pagbubukas pa lang ng blasting cup, meron na siyang friction. So, meron mga instances or incidents na nangyayari na sumasabog yung blasting cup habang ina-examine or um, binubuksan ng mga chemist. That's why may SOP na hindi tatanggapin yung blasting cup kung hindi na-open ng EOD trained personnel. Why? Because we should always think of safety first. Okay? So, that's the end of our discussion for today. Thank you very much for listening. And I will post um, an, a quiz for your participation in this um, meeting. Okay? Thank you. If you have any questions, feel free to send me a message. Thank you and keep safe.